Hello and welcome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I am Lisa Warner and this and is Solution in. Sunday because the soul is the solution. And I am here today with one of my favorite people in the world, Marcy Newman. And we are here today to talk about self-love. What does it mean to love ourselves? We have been conditioned by so much in society that loving ourselves or putting ourselves first is selfish or wrong. And let's dispel some of those myths today. So Marcy, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much and hello to everyone. Um, it's really such an honor. And as you know, Lisa, just my greatest joy to be talking about this subject because from where I sit and all my years of experience, which is now getting close to about 50 years in this field of helping people to heal their hearts, I have come to know self-love is really the key to having it all. But like you said so beautifully, Lisa, there's so much confusion and there's so much programming that we um, take on, right, as humans, that is the complete antithesis of loving ourselves. So I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, I really am. And thank you so much for this opportunity to share what I've come to know. Beautiful. You call yourself the heart shift coach. And we all know the connection between the heart and love. So I know that you have been exploring this connection and what self-love really is for a long time. Yeah. And for me, I as well, healing the body, healing anything is love. We have to do that from the space of love. We can't do it from the space of war or fighting or judgment. So when we judge ourselves, when we judge our bodies, when we feel bad about ourselves or our bodies, that's the antithesis that you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you, you brought up this. Um, yes, I am known as the heart shift coach. And um, actually what came to my mind is that I'd like to start out, I think, talking about the connection between self-love and heart shifting. Uh, because again, I think that there are two um, aspects of necessity that we clearly understand. So I guess let's just start out with self-love um, and what that is, because I look at self-love as a prerequisite for heart shifting. So um, a basic concept about heart shifting, which I want everybody to sort of keep in their minds as we're talking, and then I'll, I'll dive more into self-love. Heart shifting is actually a recalibration of the energy that you are emitting from your heart. Keep that in mind, okay? Because of course, if you want to see a change in anything that you have and are creating in your life, you know it has to come from a different vibrational frequency. So that's what our um, intention is here. But let's start with self-love. As I said, it's a prerequisite to that heart shifting. And start right here by saying, you know, you, you spoke, Lisa, about kind of debunking some of these myths. I think we need to start by differentiating between what self-love is and self-care. Because a lot of people think that self-care is actually self-love. And it couldn't be further from the truth. So self-care, self-love, two completely different vibrational frequencies. All right, so let's start the differentiation right there. Self-care 
is what you do to bring soothing and comfort into your life. It's what you do to make you feel more peaceful, perhaps more nurtured. Um, and self-care then becomes this series of things that we do that we've come to know um, do exactly that. They sort of soothe our spirit or soothe our body. And they bring us, you know, to this place of, you know, sometimes an inner peace um, or sense of that. But in most cases, it is a temporary fix to an energy that is on the move, looking to be raised in another way. So here's what I found. Whenever we are in need of that soothing, it's indicative to me, oh, I just got God bumps. Yeah. It's indicative to me that we have come up across a limiting belief and we have not yet crossed that threshold. So we need the soothing, we need the comforting, we need to come back, right? Um, with what we are providing for ourselves. Now, self-care is also something that we reach from, from the outside, right? It's the outside world, we reach for it. And it is again, with the purpose of soothing us, soothing our spirit. Self-love, and make no mistake, is at the opposite end of that spectrum because it actually takes you out of the comfort zone. <laughs> it is when you are crossing that threshold. It is when you have come to this realization that you cannot continue to look to the outside for what it is that you need for real soothing. And I know that we're going deep here, but I feel like everyone here um, can really handle this, all right? So I'm thrilled to be here. I can feel the vibration um, of our audience and you're getting this, all right. So we're here at this vibrational threshold, whether we recognize it um, consciously or not, we are always working to raise our vibrational frequency because that's what we do as creators, right? And that's who we are, that high vibrational frequency. It's exactly. our natural state of being. Exactly. So it's what we are, it's what we do. So we are constantly in action. So when we find ourselves up against this limiting belief and we haven't yet crossed the threshold, we have all of this hard wiring that's within us that's constantly bringing us these messages that we're being called to level up in some way, okay? That energy is calling to us. And the truth of the matter is we can continually try to get that from the outside, all right? But you may come up against some frustration and I know we've all experienced that we've we get to this point where we feel like we've done everything we can and we still have this yearning inside to connect on a deeper level with who we are. Mm -hmm. So self-love rather than soothing and comforting takes you out of that comfort zone. It is the cultivation of that courage that you are giving yourself permission to do something different, to take that risk, right? Of doing something different, of reaching for something in a higher vibrational frequency, but it doesn't stop there. <laughs> <laughs> because- Giving us what, ourselves the permission to be who we are. 
know, we've not been given that permission. We've always been from the external world. The external right. world teaches us that we have to be a certain way or do a certain thing or act certain ways. And those things don't feel good to us. Exactly. And then, we need, then that's when we need that soothing. You know, that's when we, we reach for the, the bubble bath or the, or the glass of wine or, you know, whatever it is that we're using as that self-care in the moment. And even some of the self-care things, you know, can be smoking or drinking or, you know, some of the things that soothe us, but, you know, really don't help us in the long run. And well, you know, they all serve their purpose and, you know, perfect examples, Lise, right? So some of them can be healthier than others but it's how we have conditioned ourselves to reach for comfort. And so what happens when we then cultivate that courage to go further, to step above the self-soothing in that moment and live in the energy of self-love is that the one caveat is that Self-love always requires action, but it's action that you are uncomfortable with. It's action perhaps even you've never done before, perhaps you've never even considered before, perhaps not even something that you've given yourself permission to even contemplate. And so self-love, and self-care, as you can see, are two completely different things. One, self-care is what we do to soothe and comfort ourselves and put a hat on, make sure we're warm, you know, all of that stuff. Self-love is when we are expanding and we are evolving and we are giving ourselves permission. And I love that word. We are giving ourselves permission to be in the wholeness of our being, to recognize and accept that we are divine beings. And so self-love is actually this journey. It's a, it's a journey where we are given constant invitations by spirit, right? Constant opportunities to come into a greater version of ourselves. And so it will feel at times very demanding. You may want to run and hide. <laughs> you may want to say, I can't do this. And it's okay if you, you know, you sort of take a breath, right? But it will be relentless in calling to you because this is what we're doing here. We are here. Our whole purpose is to come into the knowingness of our being exactly. as the divine itself, incarnate. And so that is, well, it's a bit of a taskmaster, isn't it? <laughs> because it keeps demanding more from us. Because every step that we take opens up new doors, new invitations, new opportunities to be that expression. And so, you know, we have to start to look at, well, some, what are some of the ways that it's going to call you? Well, the truth of the matter is it's going to be unique to you. But the theme will always be the same. The theme will be you accepting yourself in your wholeness, actually coming to know it. So again, I just want to add a little, you know, information as to how different these two things are. Self-care is all based on your perception. It is the perception of you through your human eyes as to what will bring you back to yourself, right? And again, it, it, it achieves that on a partial level it feels good self-love 
comes from a place of knowing. You have stepped from perception as a human over that threshold and into the knowing yourself as a divine being, the creator of everything that you are experiencing. Very different. Yeah, and it's from my perception, it's really about stepping back into our integrity, meaning the wholeness of who we are. This, this society that we live in invites us all the time to give up our integrity, to give up our inner knowing, to give up who we are. Listen to the teacher, listen to the preacher, listen to the doctor, listen to the tax man, listen to everybody else is, becomes the authority figure. From the time we're born, we are told that, that the adults are the authority figures and that we have to do what they say because they know best. Right. Well, unfortunately, that's actually not true. <laughs> you know, we are each the soul. And as the soul, no matter what size body we're in, we are fully integrated with source. And we actually each always know best what we need. And even though when we're little, little kids, we can't articulate our needs, it's just assumed that we don't know anything. So we are educated into the ways of the world and how we are expected to be in the world. And it doesn't feel good for no. the majority of us. We are in this fight or fight, you know, fight or flight mode, you know, trying to survive our lives. And we're not ever encouraged to be ourselves truly and authentically we're never asked as children you know what are your gifts and talents what do you really love to do what do you actually know why are you here on this planet we we look at kids these days and they're just you know oh here try this try try dance try figure skating try gymnastics try this try that try this and they're never just allowed to just find out who they really are. So in this society, we're growing up totally confused because so much of this society doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. When you really step back and you look at it, we are souls in bodies on this beautiful mother earth who gives freely everything that we need to survive and to really thrive on this planet. We're given fresh air, clean water, the, the foods that come up out of the earth, we're given the land to live on, the, the resources to build shelters. But instead of living freely on the planet, we are chained to this monetary system of things that we have to do to get money in order to survive. And it completely, throws us off balance because it's not natural for any of us. And then we, we go, I can't figure out how to make this life work. And then we start self-devaluing and go, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I don't feel good. I don't know what's wrong with my body. I don't know why I can't find a job that is fulfilling you know, so then we just assume that there's something wrong with us and we go down that pathway and we just start feeling worse and worse and worse because we're never taught how to love and honor and respect ourselves and to be able to simply live in integrity. Yeah, all of the above. Absolutely. You know, you checked off lots of different issues that arise um, you know, on this journey. And again, I want to emphasize it's a journey because, um, you know, I recently did this video and I entitled it, um, 
I'm not who I was before I became who I am. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, you know, we, um, we are here to experience all of those things. It's part of the human experience. At the end of the day, what's actually happening with all of those distractions, right? And um, the conditioning that we receive and I think that this is, oh, I'm getting God bumps again. Mm -hmm. This is particularly important right now for us to understand is that from that moment, right? From that moment, you know, it's like we are being groomed to acquiesce our power. Yes. What we are seeing now all around the world is the result of having been groomed to acquiesce our power. Yes. Now we are seeing that of course, on a very vivid level with everything that's coming forward with children sex trafficking and pornography and all of that. And it's, you know, those who envision themselves as powerful and overpowering these children and grooming them on a completely different level to acquiesce that power. But we're also seeing it in the propaganda. We're seeing it in the constant rhetoric that we feel a discord with. And sometimes we can't put our finger on it. And the reason we can't put our finger on it, we can't really isolate what's happening is because we have been groomed. We have been groomed constantly, just as you said, Lisa, to, to trust in the information that's coming from the outside of us rather than the information that's constantly being provided to us from within. Mm -hmm. So this journey of self-love is a reflection of the need to come back to who we truly are, as you said, in our wholeness and only in our wholeness will we know ourselves as the creative force of this world and the universe within us. And so self-love is also the journey of, yes, coming to know ourselves but also learning, well, sort of learning what actions bring us back into alignment with that faster. We all are going to fall off the wagon. Happens every day. But what does happen when you start this journey of self-love and you are cultivating what I call a self-love lifestyle? is that you become more and more vibrationally attuned to what it feels like to be in that self-love vibrational frequency. Now, here's what that feels like. It feels like pure freedom. Pure freedom may have been real scary getting there. You may have felt like you had were wearing cement shoes. I was like, ah, you know, trying to get over that line. But once you get there, it is sheer freedom. You know that you have just expressed your truth. And so that happens in thought, in word, and of course, in deed. And when those are aligned, you hit that vibrational frequency of self-love and you will never make the mistake of sort of misconceiving what that is again, because it is an immediate reverberation. You feel it through every cell every particle of your being extending outwards. And it's so funny, but I know I've experienced it sometimes in the most 
uncomfortable situations, like I said, like you're having a discussion with somebody and it, and it gets heated, right? Your conditioning has you retreat. Your conditioning has you searching for some way to, I had a friend who used to say to, um, you know, get to their thumb by going around their elbow. You know, it's like this, this run around, right? But when you hit that expression of your truth, the entire energy system responds immediately. And here's the beauty of all of this. And like I said before, I always like to emphasize that it's a journey. But what spirit tells us by our experiences is that new life begins every nanosecond we choose it to. So what that is saying is that self-love is a choice. It is a choice to begin again. It's a choice to realign over and over and over. Sometimes you'll be successful. Sometimes you won't. It all depends on your sensitivity to your conditioning, your grooming to acquiesce your power. So we all have these triggers, right, Lisa? All have these triggers <laughs> that come and show themselves to us based on our childhoods. <coughs> or past life expressions and experiences. But if we can remember that those triggers are actually invitations, we can start to navigate our lives differently. And that's what I like to share. Yes, absolutely. They're always opportunities, those triggers. You know, we have been taught to to defend ourselves or protect ourselves or run away from those triggers. But it's like, no, if we just, if we look at them and we face them head on and we just, when we look at them for the trigger that they are, they're showing us where we have a hole in our energy field, where the energy is reversed, where, where we're flowing the energy backwards, the anti-self programming. And it's that place where we need to look and see where am I not in full integrity here? Yes, <laughs> exactly. But here's the process. The process is, and this is again, why it's so different from self-care. The process isn't reaching out here for those answers. The process is, is that actually while you're in action, with reaching for this vibrational frequency that you are constantly looking inside, all right, what's keeping me separate from it? So you, you're developing this conscious awareness energetically of what's happening. Oh, I, I reacted there. Oh, let me let that go. Um, oh yeah, that was, um, that was a good trigger. Oh, let me let that go. In other words, rather than and you spoke about this earlier, you know, it's like rather than giving the power to the conditioning, we are giving the power to ourselves as the creative life force. So we are creating this nanosecond and then we create the next nanosecond and the next nanosecond. And when we're in process with ourselves, we don't need any information from outside, zero. We are so in tune, doesn't mean that we, um, that we feed what's coming forward. It means that we step into our creative mastery and we discern, oh, what do I need to let go here? You know, what's the ego's influence here? Oh, what do I, what do I need to shift here? What energy? And what this does is it also reminds us of the power that we have as a divine being. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly choosing our divinity over our humanity. Now, we are still human. So we will be given these opportunities all the time. But the process is the same. 
it is always coming within rather than going outside. And not to say the soothing isn't good. Oh my God, it's wonderful. We love it. Every single bit of it. There's nothing I love more than a good, you know, foot massage, right? So we are constantly nurturing ourselves. But the true process is one where we are inside constantly. And it's where we also make the shift of perceiving ourselves as human and accepting ourselves as divine and knowing ourselves as that. So we're constantly traversing, going back and forth. But the gift, I think, of our lives here on the earth is to know ourselves as the divine being and take that knowledge and start to create from that vibrational frequency to create a better experience for all of us based on love. Absolutely. Because when we are in full integrity, when we are acting as our true selves, we don't fight with each other, we don't hoard, we don't gouge, we don't we just we simply live as the love that we are we live in integrity honor respect dignity we treat each other ourselves and this beautiful planet with that same love and respect so we don't have we won't have wars we won't have this vast discrepancy in wealth where the wealthy have all of it and the poor have none of it. You know, it is all about coming back into full integrity. We have Michelle, good morning, Michelle. Michelle is asking, is self-love happiness? Sometimes I love myself, but I'm not happy. I tell myself I love me. I tell myself that I am filled with love, but there is rarely happiness is it okay to be to not be happy to love myself and be content is that enough beautiful questions michelle thank you uh, uh, it was a fabulous question and i i actually would like to respond to this on a couple of different levels first off Happiness is temporary. Happiness is something that comes to us from the outside. It's for me, finding the perfect pair of shoes that go with my dress, okay? It is, um, you know, being happy about this, being happy about that. Um, it's temporary. When you reach the vibrational frequency of self-love, you will actually experience joy. Joy is synonymous in frequency with um, all of the aspects, you know, of that vibrational uh, wave, you might say. So joy and freedom, they're synonymous. Think about the times in your life where you have felt absolutely free. The joy is unbridled the joy i'm getting god bumps the joy is like ah right harry met sally you are like vibrating off of this earth it's joy it comes up from within you because it's your natural state it is your natural expression of vibrational frequency that's in alignment with you having come to know yourself as the divine creator that you are. So we have a perfect example of how telling yourself that you are love and feeling that alignment are two completely different things. Yes. Looking for happiness, we look outside of ourselves releasing the joy can only come from inside of us 
that joy is there. It is the divine presence within us. And so it's a perfect segue into how do we release this, right? How do we access that energy? If it's us and it's already there, why in God's name do we have so much trouble accessing it? Yeah. And it's because, you ready for this? Because you're trying to do it with your thoughts. It has nothing to do with your thoughts. And that is another way that you have been groomed to acquiesce your power. Your power is in your heart. Your heart acts in two ways. It is a triage center. It takes all of the energy from all of that conditioning, all of that acquiescing, and it says, you know, I can't have this running around here. It's going to create havoc. So, you know, it congregates around the heart waiting for it to be healed. Mm -hmm. So think about the outer aspect of the heart, a triage center. It's like a hospital waiting room, right? And the nurse or doctor goes in, okay, you, you're in an emergency situation and you, I can see you've been holding on to that for a very long time. Oh my God, it's like cement. And you, so that it's this constant recognition that can only happen if you're in here. So you have to be in here to live that. And what happens then is that the inner chamber of our heart. So if you've studied the chakras, for instance, you know that there's a outer chamber and an inner chamber and they have two different vibrational frequencies. That's why they um, are seen as different colors, okay? The inner chamber is your divine self. And this is why the work is so essential that we start the clearing the triage, but we address every single one of those energies because it is keeping us separate from who we really are, keeping us separate from accessing that energy of divinity that is us. It's just there hanging out, waiting for us to, you know, access it and express it. Here's what the energy of love um, on a divine scale is all about. And it's why our lives here as humans are so essential to creating the vibrational frequency of these universes, right? That just are incredible expressions, right? Of creation. Our whole job is to become as expansive in love as we possibly can. What happens when we expand? Think about a balloon, what happens? It expands, but it also, right, creates space within it. Love then, the creative force can extend itself through you. So you're talking about the difference between love trying to get through a brick wall and love getting through this beautiful like world that's inside of that balloon. The external world is designed, it, the external world comes at us. And when we have that energy of this basically a Satanistic society that we live in, that is an anti-life society. It is designed to steal our life force energy. Right. It is not designed to empower us. And, and, you know, if you think about, you know, if the people that make all the rules in the world, if they were actually in it for creating a beautiful planet, we would be living in beauty and peace and ease right here and right now. Yeah. But the all of these rules that have been made have been have herded us into this little corral that is called the mind, this matrix of false beliefs that keep us separated from the soul. We are literally body and soul. 
and the mind is this thing that has been programmed and then we live inside all of these beliefs and we bounce around inside the mind going oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh with that running and running and running in the hamster wheel and all of the the solution is outside the mind the soul exists beyond those parameters beyond those lim limiting beliefs and when we're in that mind and we're thinking, I am love. I'm thinking that I can do this. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. That's not where we feel. The thinking part actually rarely feels good. <laughs> there's all, there's usually a lot of resistance in the thinking because we keep thinking the same thought over and over. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? What am I going to do to fix this? How am I going to protect myself? All of those thoughts are inside this little box that has become the mind. But when we step outside into the heart, into the soul that we are, in the unlimited space, we can start to feel the non-resistance. We start to feel that, that love, that freedom, the ease, the joy of who we actually are when we step outside of all of the rules of how we're trying to make our life work. It's not about trying to make our lives work. It's about finding who we are and expressing that. And then our lives just simply work <laughs> like by default. <laughs> yeah, and you know, <clears throat> I think a lot of people have this, you know, when we, we start to talk about, you know, like all of these um, influences, right? And again, clearly, you know, the power and control is at its apex right now in terms of what we're seeing and experiencing. And yet, if we can accept our divinity, we can also accept that even that is working in our favor. Even that is an invitation for us to transmute energy. Our hearts, that inner chamber, it's where we actually, we transform the energy. We transmute it. We change, we alchemize the energy frequency. So it's like the more that power and control wants to squash us down, if we can remember the result will be, we become that diamond from all of that control and power and force against us. We know that this is just as essential as the massages. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> the self-care is to nurture us and to bring us back into knowing our worth and our value, that we are love itself. You know, we've learned so much from those who have walked this earth before us. And it's all part of the collective mind, right? So even though that mind, um, that catches us right and keeps us going like a hamster um on that wheel around and around and around and around we're still connected to the consciousness of wholeness so we come back to the choice to continue on the hamster wheel or to do what we need to do inside so that we can connect now to the collective mind, which has no limitations in any way. And it's only constant possibilities. So we come back to self-love and choice, you know, being the catalytic force. And this is where we step into again our divinity of alchemists and we heart shift that energy so the heart shifting is an actual 
transmutation. It is an alchemizing of that energy that once was occupied as density. It once was keeping us separate and through the heart, only through the heart, can that then receive what it needs to come back into full alignment with the energy frequency of us as the love and the light that we are, the God consciousness. You can't reach God consciousness from here. God consciousness is here within us. It's the only place where our truth is. 97% of our mind is controlled by the ego, which is all about being human. And still it's no match for the divinity within us. Think about that. If your ego will allow you to. No match, because we open the door to that divinity. We turn that key, which is heart shifting. We are the full expression of all that is. And that's where Lisa was talking about, where we don't need to figure anything out. It is a natural unfolding of divinity and our creation using that energy and the frequency of pure love and its light exactly and when when we are tuned in tapped in, it tuned in turned on tapped in to that source that love itself source is unconditional love itself it's who and what we are it's where we came from it's what we're made of we are intimately connected always to source. And when we open that up inside, we find it inside. We focus on, we find it simply by looking for it. <laughs> like, like it's not some elusive thing. Like source isn't like somewhere out there. It's right here, right now. All we have to do is focus on it. And when we focus on that light that is within, and we allow our own light, just like the light of the sun, we allow our light to shine forth. We tap into source, we notice it, and we are, allow ourselves to feel that love. And then that love is what emanates outward from us. That's what allows us to expand. That's where there is no resistance. We're not contracting or trying to protect ourselves from the external world. We are expressing who and what we are onto the external world. And the external world then becomes the direct reflection of this expression of the love that we are. It's not about having to love <laughs> ourselves in that way that we have been taught about it's about allowing ourselves to feel the love that we are and when we feel that love that we are we feel good automatically because it feels great <laughs> to be in this field of unconditional love this constant flow of life force energy that is flowing to us and through us 24 seven. And it, I say that healing is the ability for us to feel good, to feel that love that flows through us. The society makes the energy flow backwards. It's coming at us. So we always feel like we need to protect ourselves. But we, when we tune in to the light and the love that we are, and we allow our light to shine just like the sun. I have my, my students in class, we do meditations and we close our eyes and we focus on the light that comes from that heart. And we allow that light to shine. And then we notice the peace, the ease, the joy, the love that is already infused in that light. And when we allow ourselves to simply focus, notice, 
and then feel that light and that energy, we just automatically start feeling good. And the more we do that, the more our energy starts to open and flow out, just like you were saying, Marcy. And we start living in the space of creator, conscious creation of our lives. And yeah. <clears throat> and Jessica saying this message is so spot on and in real time alignment with what I've been downloading in my communion with heart. I'm in awe when I see and hear on the outside what's exactly happening on the inside. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you for this. this is and exactly I'm in awe. Awesome. Saying. <clears throat> Absolutely. That awe, yeah. that awe comes from alignment. Exactly. We're not meant to be in awe of each other. Awe is the recognition of that divinity. It is <clears throat> the recognition that it permeates all things and is expressed through all things. That awe is the recognition that all that is, is here being, being not just shown to you, but you're actually experiencing it. It's where we see like the synchronicities and we see the, <clears throat> and, and this is like, you know, it just, it blows my mind every time, right? Where we see all those synchronicities and we see how this love conspires to bring us these messages over and over and over again. So it comes from here and it comes from there and it shows us this and shows us that. <clears throat> then we can come to this place of sheer awe of this intelligence, our part in it, but also for me, what brings me to my knees so often is this recognition of how loved and cherished I am, how <clears throat> much of an integral part I am in the expression of this God consciousness through me, through me. And so the recognition of that, it's, it's meant to be like candy, right? It's meant to like be so sweet to us that we just want more and more and more because it is the sweet nectar, we could say of the gods, right? It is that sweet nectar that is <clears throat> meant to fortify us and to remind us constantly that we are the expression of this source energy in this world and beyond. We are not limited to this world. We are multi-dimensional <clears throat> beings living in multi-dimensions. So we are a constant expression of source energy. And my God, it is such an incredible experience to know that. Exactly. And, you know, this just shows how we are creating our reality we are creator beings and the reality that we experience is the reality that we create just like jessica is saying as she tunes in and she starts to focus on that love that's inside the external world just simply shows up and reflects that and here right. we are as the reflection of what jessica has been doing on her own she says yes my mind is blown divinity is speaking to us uh through us through everything and everyone that's right what amazing love this is amazing exactly. yeah and when we focus inside <clears throat> on that love we literally create heaven on earth yeah. life becomes a magical beautiful journey and it is just you know delight and surprise and beauty and wonder one right after the other 
but right now for the majority of humanity, our attention has been focused in a different direction. Our attention gets focused on things that we don't like. And then we say, oh no, and we get so focused on what we don't like that what we don't like shows up. So this is the heart shift that Marcy's talking shift. about. Yeah. Is instead of having our hearts broken all the time, constantly by what we see in the external world, we can literally stop engaging with the external world in the same way that we have been going, oh no, this is terrible. We can start engaging inside and we can start engaging with source, with the love that is all where and everywhere, every when, every way. And it's flowing to us and through us all the time. And when we simply focus on ourselves, we change the entire world from here. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I have to share what came into my mind because, you know, you use that term, Lise, um, you know, creating heaven on earth. And I had this wonderful friend um, when I lived on Long Island, uh, actually a, a group of, of women, and we would gather around the kitchen table and talk about all these things. And there was this woman who was, um, she was um, older than the rest of us, um, so attuned. And she used to talk about reading the newspaper. Now I had stopped reading the newspaper for years already, right? And she said, oh, she said, I use it as a practice session every day. And I said, what? She said, yeah. She said, I read through and anytime I can feel my heart contracting, I use that as an opportunity to expand through my heart and to send love to whatever has caused that contraction. And I remember like just sitting there thinking, yeah, this is an invitation to take things to a whole other level because part of our job here, right, is to alchemize, right? So we are alchemists. Our job is to, is to be able to take energy of density and give it the light that it needs to raise its frequency. Now, like you said, at least most times we come up against that and we contract. We think we need to protect ourselves from it when in fact, that is actually the influence of the ego. That is how we've been conditioned and we don't any longer remember, oh wait, I'm actually supposed to bring that through my heart, <laughs> you know, because my heart is here as the mechanism to give that energy what it's been asking for all along. Exactly. There is nothing that's not seeking the light, nothing. And I'd just like to loop back to Michelle's question, you know, about not feeling happy. And, you know, even though she tells herself, you are loved, you are loved, all this and that. I want to invite you, when that happens, when you get caught up in that, that reel, right, of thinking that that's the way to find your happiness, I want you instead, perhaps to begin with some soothing, with some self-care to help to relax and help to soothe. And then start the process of going into your heart. You know, and this is a story for another time, but when I was preparing to leave my marriage, I was working with a therapist who specialized in women in transition. And I'll never forget what she said to me. She said, Marcy, you have to be willing to risk it all to have it all. And so with that in mind, know that every time that you catch yourself 
contracting your own energy. That your job is to come back to your natural state of opening your heart and rather than protecting yourself, celebrate yourself. Celebrate the fact that it's got nothing on you. <laughs> okay. Nothing. <laughs> the truth of you conquers all things. Love is the most powerful force in all universes, and you are that love. Beautiful. So from my perspective, don't get caught up on not being happy. Get caught up on opening your heart and letting the joy come out and take you for the ride of your life. <laughs> Here, here. Beautifully said, Marcy. What a beautiful, what a beautiful wrap up of our, our conversation as well. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it really is just that simple to be mm -hmm. able to look inside and look for the love and the light that we are. Yeah. We simply have to notice it. It's already there. There's right. nothing that we have to do. There's nothing that we have to prove. There's nothing that we have to fight against or change. There's just the ability to be what we already are. Yeah. <laughs> Marcy, thank you so much for such a beautiful conversation today. Again, it's my greatest joy. You know, it is um, my opportunity to be that expression of the God within me and to invite people to um, understand, you know, self-love on a completely different scale, unapologetically. Um, coming into your divinity is what you're being called to do every day. And so, yeah, I would actually love to invite people um, to join me actually um, here on Facebook in my group called Self Love and Hardships. And to remember that this journey is one that we all begin right where we are. Right where we are. And it is a marvelous journey. Indeed. It's beyond our comprehension as to what it's ready to show us. Exactly. Yeah. The greatest story ever told. The story right. of you becoming yourself. And how beautiful. Yeah. So also, can... just one more thing. If I can invite people to find me at selfloveuniversity.com. Um, there's lots of information there. And of course, you can contact me or at marcynewman.com. And that's Newman with an N-E-U-M-A-N-N. -E -N -N, and Marcy is M-A-R-C-Y, which will be here. Um, and yeah, let's remember that we're all in this together. We're here to support each other, but we're also here um, to be that full expression. And um, our heart will lead the way. No worries. Indeed, it will. Yeah. It's a very natural journey when we allow it to unfold. Exactly. Thank you so much, Lisa, for having me here today. And thank you to our audience for being such massive hearts of gold, pure gold. Thank you. Indeed, I have an amazing tribe of fabulous light beings. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Jessica Ann says, thank you both. I'm joining the group today. There you go. So <laughs> Wonderful. Jessica Welcome. Ann. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Marcy. If you are, and thank you as the audience, if you are watching on 
YouTube or listening on Connecting You to You radio, look in the show notes and you will see how to connect with Marcy and with me. And we thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Soul Lucian Sunday, because the soul is the solution. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Create for yourselves an amazing love-filled week. Love yourselves. Beautiful. Thank you so much. See you next week.